Hello and welcome back to the show, Goswick Lane. It is great to have you here today. And we have a guest. Our guest name is Ariana Thompson. She is a mortgage broker for Fairway Mortgage here in Longview, Texas. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. We're going to get into all the things that makes you happy and sad in your job. Okay. Are you excited? <laughs> yeah. How do you I'm guys, excited. I know you're excited. You brought her here. You know everybody, right? Yeah. So How do you guys know each other? Whenever I started in the real estate business uh, five years ago, she was already a lender, and we got connected, um, and she's been helping me uh, with all my clients since that point. Um of course, in between, we, you know, as a realtor, you work with different lenders. All normally are great, but uh, Ariane is a lot of help, and <clears throat> my wife knows her uh, since high school. So she knows your better half. You're connected there before you were connected when you got in the real estate industry. Correct. Okay. Who do you like better, him or his wife? Well, right now, I'm, I'm going to have to say Genty. Oh, I have to man. Say, I have to say Genty right now. <laughs> You're going to be in trouble. Morgan knows the truth. Okay. She does. You can lie on the show. She's my she's bestie. A, Love okay. her. She's always gonna. She's always gonna be number one there. Mm-hmm. Don't be offended. Uh, not at all. I can tell in your face. He knows Morgan's Ooh. cooler. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Morgan is cooler than me. <laughs> all right, Ar- Ariana. I almost said Ariana. Dead no. gum it. No. <laughs> Ariana. 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 It's Ariana. Ariana. Yeah. <laughs> I got it right the first time. Yeah. <laughs> tell me about what you do. Sorry okay. for pronouncing your name wrong. Everybody does it. I've okay. heard it all. You he told me when we met. He said it's Ariana. Not yeah. Ariana. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> so I am a mortgage lender with Fairway Mortgage here in Longview. Um, in our branch, we have about six employees in our office, I think. Um, basically, what I do is I get buyers pre-approved to purchase. So whether they call you know, me or their realtor first, hopefully if they call their realtor, they send them over to me. And I send them an application to get filled out. Um, where I will, once they're finished and they submit it, I will review it. I'll look at their credit, their debts, their income, um, their assets. We'll talk about where they want their monthly payment and get them kind of a max budget of what they need to shop for. Um, from there they'll, they'll talk to their real estate agent. And then once they go under contract is when I come back in and then we process the loan, uh, which takes around 30 days to go from contract to closing. Okay. So you're doing that. That's Kind of a lot of stuff to do. A lot, yeah. But I that. have an awesome team that helps me. Okay, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. So what are some, you mentioned some qualifications that you're going to be looking at. Yes. Credit scores. Yep. If I'm coming to you for a loan, where, where does my credit score need to be? And what are some of the different programs that you would recommend? Okay, so each loan program is going to have different credit score requirements. Um, FHA, we can go down to 580 in some cases. Um, conventional can technically go down to 620. Um, we like to see higher 600s uh, for conventional. That's that's going to be the most cost effective use of the program is if you have a better credit score. Okay. Um, we do offer a USDA loan. That's no money down. Um, typically a 640 credit score. Ooh, no money down. Did y'all hear that? Yeah. No money there down. There are some stipulations, okay. of course. Sure. Um, we do VA loans, which is also no money down. Okay. Um, so. Qualified for VA, do you just have to serve for yeah. some length of time? How does that work? Yeah, so you have to be a veteran. Um, there's also um, surviving spouse benefits. So okay. sometimes a surviving spouse can can take advantage of that VA loan. Um, if their spouse, you know, has passed away and they, they get the survivor benefits. Um, okay. So, yeah. All right. So different programs, di- different packages. Let's let's hop back for just a minute. You said in the beginning, if they call Genty, Genty says, hey, call Ariana. Right. Ariana. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> call Ariana first. <laughs> Why? Why are we calling our, our lender first before okay. we find a house? We're calling me first because... We don't want to waste anybody's time. Okay. We want to shop in our in our price range. We don't want to fall in love with a five hundred thousand dollar house when we might are only approved for two fifty. Okay. Um, and then we want to make a good impression on the sellers. Also, that's the that's like a huge thing is um, a seller is not going to really take you seriously if you haven't been pre approved by a lender. They don't want um, to accept an offer for somebody that that. Met, might not actually be approved or the deal mm-hmm. might fall through two weeks, two weeks in. So it's definitely um, 
best to talk to a lender first and you'll probably be um, pushed in that direction if you call a real estate agent. Okay. Where do you come into play? You're going to send them to her. And then at what point in the process is Genty coming back into play if somebody's looking for the house? Where are you saying, okay, now let's go call your boy Genty? Typically, she'll uh, direct them back to me. Yep. So if, when I direct them to her, I send them the, uh, the I send her information to the potential buyer, and then uh, I'll text her and tell her who it is, and then I'll also tell the client, so t- tell Ariana that Genty, you know, sent okay. sent, you, sent you over there to get pre-approved. So there's she's sending them back, or they're coming back yeah. when they're pre-approved, and they have a number for a budget, right? Yeah, either which way I try to get them pre-approved unless I know them, um, you know, personally and I know that they're they're good for it or they have other loans. Okay. You know, like she said, you don't want to waste by, uh, uh, any agent's time, uh, seller's time, your time, anybody's time because, mm-hmm. you know, that's that's how we get paid is off of these deals maturing. And if, if you know, we have a buyer that doesn't qualify, then we've wasted a lot of time. Uh, yes, and you can't get that back. No. Nope. So you're pre-qualifying. You're pre-qualifying to get them pre-qualified, basically. Well, she's wasting right. a lot of time because she is pre-qualifying whether or not. All I'm doing is having a conversation. She, okay. They're putting in the work, and they get paid the same way that we do, you know, okay. to, essentially. Most if it, them, if it closes, right? Correct. You only it get paid. To, it has to close and fund, yep. Okay, mm-hmm. so you're basically your company gets paid commission. I'm yep. sure your job is... Partly commission structured, partly salary. A hundred percent commission. Okay, so you have to close. I have to. It's like him. Yeah. You have to close. Now, are you a ten ninety nine or a W two? W two. Okay, you're ten ninety nine, right? Ten ninety nine. Yeah, this is interesting. We've talked, we talked a little bit off air about W twos and stuff. Yeah. Um, so you want to have, you want to have, to be able to get pre qualified, you want to show income, whether that's a W two or if you have like really good. Yeah structure of what your businesses make right yeah I mean we've I've done plenty of um self-employed um buyers but there are a lot of self-employed buyers that do apply and they might not show enough income but um I mean that's just part of it that's part of I mean yes whenever I I ask her to do some stuff for me she's like oh no I know because you know like you know you got to you got to give a lot of information Mm -hmm. it's time it's a very time consuming process it can be yeah. yeah, it is. I, I hate I hate it. Especially mm-hmm. for people like Genty who have all the things going on. Yes. Right. It's, it's difficult. <laughs> it's a, it, they just need, I mean, for their job, they need it. But me, I'm like, God. I know. <clears throat> they want everything short of a uh, sample, sample of blood. Yep. Yes. Very yeah. True. It's part of the game, though. But I get it. I get that. You know, with the banking system and stuff the way it is, it's it's just, it's part of the game that we have to play. And it, yeah. it, you can complain about it. Or just get it done. Or you can do it. And yeah. it's just as frustrating for me to have to hound people for stuff. Yeah. I wish I made the rules. <laughs> you know, the rules are there for a reason, right? They are. You know, the lending company is going to make sure that their dollars are secure. Sure. Right. So so do you guys, when you loan out for a loan, is it coming from like a private group, a bank, uh, or a private group of investors, or are you basically shopping different mortgages for? So fa- the company I work for, Fairway, we fund our own loans. Okay. Is that just They're like usually packaged up and sold on the secondary market um, okay. within probably the first six months. We do retain some servicing, but not all. Um, so, but yes, they are they are funded by Fairway at the closing table. Okay. Mm-hmm. Does that make your process easier? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Why? Well, um, number one, I don't have to broker my loans out, and when you when you keep when Fairway is the one underwriting and processing and funding these loans, I have more control of what's going on. Okay. These are my teammates I'm working with. Um, the The loan is with Fairway. When you're brokering loans out, um, if it's, if we're brokering it out to Chase, like I don't even, I don't even know who I'm talking to. Mm-hmm. Um, I have no control of really like the process. Um, in my experience, they take a little bit longer to close. Um, I'm not saying they're all like that. That's just sure. my experience. And so, for me, this is this is really the only way that I would I would do it. That's a good. That's a, a really as good far point. As being a lender, um, I wouldn't. For me personally, I wouldn't broker loans um, because I think that it's a lot less risky of a process to work somewhere that funds their own loans. Okay, 
you have one set of standards that you're working on. Yes, Although and you don't have a bunch of overlays on guidelines, and there there's a there's a lot that goes into it. But um, and then just my team is just so good. Okay, that's good. So we've got it down to a science. That's good. It's Let, let's talk about the meat meat and potatoes. Okay. Interest rates. Okay. All right. What are you seeing in interest rates right now? Okay, so um, I, last week I locked in a 15-year, which most people do 30-year loans, but 15 years is going to have better interest rates. Um, I locked in the high fives, uh, but right now for excellent credit, high five, high yeah. five <laughs> right now for excellent credit, um, we're looking at low sixes to low sevens, just depending on, on a 30. Yeah, that's okay. on a 30, just depending on the loan program and how much you're putting down and things like that. All right, so talk to us about loan programs and you know, it's kind of a misconception that you have to put 20% down on a loan. Right. What are some other options? Well, I'm um, trying to get you in the game. We'll get you in I'm the game good. She's doing okay. great. Yeah, let doing her, great let her do her thing. Okay. Okay. So we have different options. Um, of course you can put 20% down if you want to. Um, a lot of people like to put 20% down on a conventional loan because it gets rid of their mortgage insurance. Um, but we can go down to, go ahead. What is mortgage insurance? Uh, mortgage insurance is an insurance that protects the lender. So it is required on every loan, um, every, every loan, it, unless you put 20% down. So it's, and, and it's based off of different things like your loan to value and your credit score and things. So some people's, and also the loan amount. So some people's mortgage insurance is more than others. Okay. Um, but that's basically just something that protects the lender. Does it go up or down based on your credit score? Could it? Yes. It, it's the um, percentage of the percentage that is calculated to or for your mortgage insurance is based off of your credit. I mean, there's a lot of things okay. that's based off of, but sure. credit score is one. Also, depending on how much you put down can change how much mortgage insurance you're paying. So it's kind of tiered. Okay. So if you put for um, a conventional loan, 3% down, is available for first-time home buyers. If you're not a first-time home buyer, um, the minimum pay- down payment is five percent. So, say you put five percent down, your mortgage insurance is going to be a little bit more than if you put like ten or fifteen percent down. Okay, and you're just throwing that money in the trash as a consumer, correct? The private, the PMI, oh yeah, I mean it's not it's, it's not going towards your principal or anything. Right. Yeah, like you said, yeah. you're you as a consumer are paying insurance for the lender company, correct. right? Yeah. Um, but I mean, there's other loan programs that it's, it's on there for the life of the loan. So like FHA, um, but FHA is a great program. A lot of our first time home buyers use an FHA loan. Um, there is a misconception that it is for only first time home buyers and it is not. Um, anybody can use an FHA loan, but a lot of our first time home buyers like to use it because your score, your credit score can be a little bit lower. Your debt to income ratio can be a little bit higher, and then the down payment's only three and a half percent. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So on a, a lot of people want to use Jeff. F- and F- on F- a to- F- on top of that, we do a lot of down payment assistance programs on top of an FHA loan. Okay. Yeah. So FHA three hundred thousand dollar house, you're looking at like ten five down plus closing, right? So you're right. probably going to be yeah. somewhere around fifteen or sixteen thousand. Yeah, down. closing costs are typically around six thousand dollars. Okay, just give or take a little bit, depending on what you're paying for and what the seller's paying for. Okay. Yep. You said something about um, what was it? Mortgage, uh, where you get help with your down payment. What was that called? A down payment assistance. Down payment oh, assistance that's program. That's what it's called, where you get help with your yeah. down payment. Down yeah, payment you assistance. you get some assistance. How does that work? Well, um, there are different requirements for that as far as minimum credit scores of 620 with the programs that I work with. Um, there are income caps each. Um, no, depending on the county that you purchase the property in, um, They each county has a different income cap. So basically, whatever income I'm qualifying somebody off of, they can't make more than X amount a year. Okay. Um, so just for example, like today, I was looking at one for somebody, and the income cap for Greg County for the pre- specific down payment assistance program I was using is 106 thousand and some change. Um, so it's a pretty high cap. That's I like mean, fam- uh, it is really yeah. family yeah. income. Well. It is actually qualifying income. So the only the income I'm using to qualify you 
multiply that monthly income by 12, it can't be over that. Um, okay. So there are some programs that do use household income regardless, like okay. whether your wife's on the loan or not, we're counting her income. For this particular program, it's just qualifying income. Okay. Yeah. Really good information. I'd never heard of that until we sat down in this room. A lot of people use it. A lot of my clients have used it over the past year, two years. Uh, it, it's a really great incentive. Is yeah. that something that you can get? from a local bank or do they know about these things or offer them up or like, is that something that kind of you guys specialize do in dealing with? Um, I think that everyone has their own programs that they use as okay. far as a local bank. I'm not a hundred percent sure on what their DPA programs are, but as far as the lenders in town, um, I do know that we all have a few different products that we use. Where does that money come from? That money is the Texas. Hold on, you're stumping the me. State is the state. 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 I can't. I'm trying to think of what T Shack stands for. It's okay. It doesn't have to be the exact. It comes <laughs> no, from it comes the state. state. It does so it's come. Not a, it's not it, a federal it, program. No. It's a state program. Yeah. Okay. I've been sitting over here trying to stump you. That's not nice, is it? Yeah. No. He's been trying to stump her the whole time, but she's just been spitting out knowledge. Hey, why in the world is it good to have a great relationship with your lender or lenders as a as a real estate agent? Well, you want them to answer at ten o'clock at night. I mean, that's that's a good thing. Whenever you call them, uh, in all seriousness, uh, having a good lender can help the deal go smooth. Um, being available also helps because whenever buyers are ready to buy. They are ready to buy. Mm. If it's 9 o'clock at night or 10 o'clock at night and we need a payment run or I need an updated what is letter. What payment run? Uh, it, essentially, I ask Arianna, I, I tell them, I tell Arianna what uh, house we're looking at, what the price point is, and then she will pull up the data and give them an estimate on what their monthly payment would be. Okay. Now, if yeah. I'm pre-qualified for say three fifty, right, and uh, me and Genty find a house, and they will not go below three sixty five, what's your options as a lender? So my and I say I let's make this deal work. Sorry. Okay. Well, I will look up the taxes on that property because just because we give you a three fifty max doesn't mean there might not be a house that's three sixty five that you can qualify for. Okay. Um, taxes and insurance play a huge part in your monthly payment. So there may be a house for 365 where I run payments and I'm like, oh my gosh, we can do this one. Okay. Or it might be, okay, well, we can do this, but you need to pay off that personal loan you have that's $150 a month okay. um, to bring our debt to income ratio down a little bit. Um, sometimes a larger down payment will help, but really, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, Putting an extra five thousand dollars down over thirty years doesn't make a huge difference in your debt to income ratio. Mm. Um, and then if that doesn't work, then Genty's going to have to work his magic and get it down to three fifty. Yeah, that's I mean, on you now. That, that, she's she saves situations with that, like, hey, let's move this around. Let's you know, you pay off this, and and there are sellers out there. You know, if I'm representing the buyer and they uh, say this is the number, we're not going below it. Um, then you have to try to be as creative as possible in order to make that work. How often does that happen where you just don't find something that fits perfectly into your pre-qualification and you got to get creative? Not Honestly, not that, that okay. often, especially, again, if you have a good lender and they can always tell Anna there's not a problem, there's a solution. She, you know, She's like, I really don't think I can do it. I'm like, yeah, you can You'll figure it out. Yeah. You just well, I mean, it's you it. typically run into those issues when somebody is shopping at like the tip, tip, top of their budget. Um, that's when the, you have to do most of the critical thinking to figure out how to make this work. And I mean, that's obviously our goal is to make people happy. And mm -hmm. I want people to be in a home that they love. And um, But at the end of the day, you have to be able to afford it. Yes. Most people are pre qualified for more than they want. Because exactly. Because they know what they you know, what they want to spend and what they want their monthly payment to be. Okay. But a lot of them that come from Ariana to me uh, already said that, hey, Ariana said I can't go over this because we've run some payments and kind of gone through some scenarios. So yeah. that's helpful. So if I'm coming to you to get pre-qualified, what are some documents that you're going to need from me up front? Um, most recent 30 days of pay stubs for sure. Two years, last two years of W-2s. Um, if you are self-employed, then I need the full tax returns, business returns, if you've got them. 
Um, we get two months of bank statements, driver's license. Um, that's pretty much it. Unless, you know, if, if you receive child support, we may need a divorce decree, a child support order. Um, it's every, like I said, kind of with everything, everyone's situation is just so unique to them, mm-hmm. um, that there may be somebody where I have to ask for 20 things. And there may be somebody where I literally just get their pay stubs, bank statements and W2s and we go on our way. Okay. So, but those are the basics. And then, you know, once you do the application and, um, and we get to talk in and we figure out, okay, you do pay child support and, oh, and you also receive social security or, you know, whatever, whatever the case is, um, then we'll, that, that kind of triggers me to ask for a few more things. Your job is to build a financial profile for this person. Yes. Right? My job is to package this loan up so good to give to an, to the underwriter that she is going to approve it. Okay. Um, because when the file goes through underwriting, I mean, ultimately the underwriter is who approves the file, mm-hmm. but it's my job on the front end to send in an approvable file. And that's why we, that's why it's such a big deal to make sure that we are approving people um, correctly and getting doing our due diligence up front to get all the necessary documents. So yeah. it, it may be frustrating sometimes to people because we have to ask for so much, but they would be a lot more frustrated if the deal fell apart. Yes. Mm-hmm. I think uh, a big part of lending is getting people approved, right? So 10 people come to you today and they want to get pre-qualified. How many of them do you get pushed through? today or not today i know that that process takes a while but the percentage of people that are getting to close out of that 10 what what is that typically that could be one or that could be 10 i feel like we go through these phases where it's like a few weeks of a lot of applications we can't do anything with and then we go through the next two weeks of like i can't even keep up because everybody is getting qualified which is great but it it literally go. it's like a roller coaster. It goes in cycles. So I always know when I keep getting applications where I can't do anything, I'm like, okay, it's coming. It's, it's coming. coming. It's yeah. coming next okay. week. I think the last six I've sent her didn't, 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 go. didn't go. But, you know, we have a really awesome credit tool department at Fairway. That's what I was going to ask you. Mm-hmm. So, um, and it's just a perk of working with Fairway. You don't have to, I mean, as the buyer, you don't have to pay for the services. Um, and so if it's something we can't do anything right now, uh, credit tool will come up with a plan, let you know how to get your score up, how long it'll take. And then yeah. I may be able to call you back in six months and we, we can do something. Okay. So you guys, not only if you say, Hey, we can't really do anything. You're well, saying, here's how we could do something in the future. Correct. That's another reason why I, I, another reason I like to send them to Ariana because she'll go back through her pipeline and look at who, who I've sent over and say, well, can we get this person per qualified? Mm-hmm. Can we get this person? You know, I may have already forgotten about them. My 90% of the chances I have. Okay. But she'll say, hey, I got so-and-so. I'm like, who? Yeah, <laughs> this is good. Now, you're so, con- you can t- continuously feeding your own pipelines. Right. And you guys yeah. know, like in the real estate and the mortgage industry, you got to have a pipeline. Yep. You, yeah. You, you, you better have some people there. If it dries up, you stop getting paid. Yep. Yeah. Somebody got to eat, right? I that's, eat a lot. That's right. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> when are we eating steaks again, Bubba? Whenever. Genty, I'm sure you have a question for her you've been dying to ask. I don't. I mean, I, I, any question that I have, I, I ask her. Um, I think that uh, the general consensus basically of um, what people want to know is, you know, down payments. And a lot of times people don't know exactly how much their credit uh, seller's concession is going to be. Okay. Or uh, loan. What am I trying to say? Qualif- qualification amount? Their closing cost. Oh, okay. Okay. So uh, that that's really what we touched on with uh, being conventional um, and then also being able to, for them to know that, hey, not only do I have to bring the 5%, 10%, 15%, I also have to bring another six, sixty five hundred. 6500 Yeah, how quick or how, like at what part, of the process, can you talk to your buyer and say, this is what we're kind of projecting? So that happens. As soon as I get their contract, my next step is to input all of their numbers. And typically within the, the day of getting the contract, I will have what's called their loan estimate out to them that day. That is something that we are required to send out okay. um, that gives an estimate. It's, it's just an estimate of sure. what our predicted numbers are going to be. 
You so, really don't know that until the bank the bank's got all their stuff done, right? Or yeah, I mean, the because bank, there's there's so many things that are third party vendors that we don't know the exact amount for. Okay. So we have an idea of what a typical appraisal costs. Some maybe a little bit more because it's two hours away, or I don't know anything. Um, sure. Surveys. Um, some title companies, title work are different. Yeah, inspections. So there's, we estimate, typically I always estimate high because I want their final numbers to come in lower. Under promise and over deliver. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. That's good. That's good. And I think you, you're right, Genty. When when you get down to the to the bottom of the barrel, when you get down to it, the, the buyer wants to know how much do I have to bring to the table to buy this house? That, that's right. really. Right. And what's my monthly payment going to be? Right. Including that, taxes and insurance. Concern. Last thing, at Fairway Mortgage, what types of loans do you guys do? We do FHA, USDA, okay. conventional, VA. Um, we do some 203K renovation loans. Um, we do, we can do refinances, refinance with cash out. Um, we can do jumbo loans. Investments. We can do investments. Like single family and multifamily residential. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Nothing commercial there, right? No commercial. So we're doing all all residential. No commercial. Stuff. No no land loans. Okay. Can you do a duplex FHA? You can. Yep. How do you do that? Um. Well, it depends on if you're going to be living in one side or not. If okay. you're going to be living in one side and renting the other one out, you can do it as a primary residence purchase and only put okay. the minimum three and a half percent down. Okay. House hacking right there. That's a great, I wish I would have done that. Yeah. Oh, me too. that I really been, wish I would have done that. Yeah. I mean, your, somebody else your is neighbor your, is paying your mortgage. Yes. Right. <laughs> yes. That's great. And even better if you could do a quad. Do y'all do quads? Do you ever do a we quad? We do. Yeah. Well, I personally don't know that I've ever financed one, but it is, yes, it's we can do multi-unit your, properties. Yes. Yeah. There's not many quads in Longview. Yeah. We don't. Mm-mm. We don't get as many no. as like the Dallas area. We have some um, loan officers in Dallas and they have a lot more like condos and okay. multi-unit properties and things like that. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, we're just East Texas. Yeah. Yeah. We got a bunch of duplexes, not, not very many quads and just enough apartments. Yes. Yep. All right. Is there anything else that you would like to add? I don't think so. Okay. I think she wants okay. to add that if you're looking to buy a house. Oh, oh yeah. 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 <laughs> What's the uh, phone number to Fairway? Okay, so my phone number is 903-806-8181. 903-806-8181. Yes. Call Ariana. Ariana. If you need a mortgage, go ahead and get that pre-approval done. They'll take good care of you. If they can't help you, they'll help you get your credit right so that you can get along. That is a big deal. So make sure that um, you might need some time. You might need six months, a year, two years. You know, I had to wait two years before we actually closed on our first home. So yeah, it's a process. It is a process, uh, but one that is worth it. It is. That it, it is a great asset. All right. We appreciate you joining us today. Remember, hit those like, share, subscribe buttons on the bottom. Remember, love God, love others, and let your work reflect that. We'll catch you on the next one.